Hey, explorers, ready to uncover what the future has in store? Because while everyone's watching Earth, something massive is unfolding right above us, a new race for territory, technology and survival. The prize, the moon. And this time, it's not just about planting a flag. Let's uncover the future. It started in the 1950s during the Cold War. Two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, turned the moon into a proving ground. In 1959, the USSR's Luna 2 became the first human-made object to crash into the moon. By 1966, Luna 9 achieved the first soft landing. But in 1969, everything changed. Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to walk on the moon. Over three years, six Apollo crews explored the surface, drove lunar rovers and brought back hundreds of kilograms of moon rock. It was glorious, expensive and short-lived. By 1972, the US had pulled the plug. In 1976, the USSR followed. Luna 24 marked the last robotic mission. Then, for three decades, nothing. No astronauts, no landers, no science. The moon was forgotten. Until now. In the 21st century, the race reignited. And this time, it's crowded. China stepped in first. Its Chang'e program began in 2007 with an orbiter, and by 2013, it landed a rover. Then came the shock. In 2019, Chang'e 4 became the first mission to land on the far side of the moon, a historic first. In 2020, Chang'e 5 brought back lunar samples, a feat no one had pulled off in over 40 years. India wasn't far behind. Chandrayaan-1 found evidence of water ice in 2008. And in 2023, Chandrayaan-3 landed successfully near the moon's south pole, a region filled with frozen water and untapped resources. Even private companies joined the race. Astrobotic and intuitive machines have already delivered landers. SpaceX is building Starship, the most powerful rocket ever, to serve as NASA's next generation lunar lander. But wait, why is everyone suddenly so obsessed with the moon? Let's dive a little deeper. The future is full of surprises. The moon is far more than just dust and craters. It holds frozen water in shadowed craters near the poles. Water we can melt, drink, split into oxygen and hydrogen, even use as rocket fuel. It may also contain helium-3, a rare isotope that could power fusion reactors on Earth if we can crack the science. And it's got location. The moon's low gravity makes it the perfect launch pad to Mars, or even the outer planets. It's a gas station, a fuel depot, and possibly a permanent outpost for humanity. But here's the twist, no one owns the moon. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty says no nation can claim sovereignty over any celestial body, but that hasn't stopped anyone from trying to stake out territory. Instead of planting flags, countries now define zones of interest, areas they explore, land in, and unofficially, expect control and the hotspots. They're all around the South Pole where water ice is most concentrated. NASA is planning to send astronauts back with the Artemis program. Artemis 2 will fly around the moon with crew in 2025. Artemis 3, planned for 2026 or 2027, will land humans near the lunar South Pole for the first time. But there's a catch. NASA's budget was recently cut. Funding for long-term bases and the Lunar Gateway Station has been slashed, timelines are slipping, political will is fading. Meanwhile, China is speeding up. It aims to land humans by 2030, build a lunar base with Russia and pioneer in-situ construction using three deprinted structures made of moon dust. India and Japan are aligning with international coalitions. The UAE is building robotic missions. And Russia, though stumbling, remains determined to claim lunar prestige. We've entered a new phase, not just a space race, a space standoff. So what does the moon look like in 2050? By then, we could see at least two permanent human outposts, one led by NASA, one by China. We'll likely have solar powered mining facilities, orbital depots, high speed lunar transport, possibly even robotic military satellites orbiting above. And yes, space tourism too. The moon will no longer be empty. 
it will be owned, not by law, but by presence. Whoever builds first, stays. Whoever extracts water, stays. Whoever defends territory, stays. And whoever stays, writes the rules. So, who will own the moon? Technically, no one. Realistically, someone will. Whether for science, survival or power, the moon is humanity's next frontier and the first moves are already being made. One thing's for sure, tomorrow is closer than you think. Stay curious, stay future ready. See you in the next discovery.